Hey pottery peeps. So my scheduled video for this week is going to get changed. Um, I'll show you what I was going to do. <laughs> Since Easter's coming up plus summer, um, this is what I actually use for um, my own personal berry bowl. And Kelly, if you're watching, she asked me for one, I think like two years ago. One of the reasons why I didn't want to make another <laughs> after making this one is because they are so fragile and um, really hard to do to get them to be lightweight. Uh, a lot of baskets, clay baskets, are really heavy and there's a reason for that because there's a lot less chance of cracking. But I've figured out a bunch of tricks to show you. Um, but this will be more of a longer video, probably more complicated and with everything that's happened this week and I'll Fill you in in just a second. Um, I don't have the brain space to do a tutorial on this. So, instead you just get to come along with me on what I've got to finish today. And I actually, this is um, um, ring bases for the wedding in um, April for my niece Marina, who's from Alaska. And um, the wedding's gonna be down here. So this stuff doesn't need to be Flown. The the, ta the table center pieces are done and they're drying. There's a couple that have warped that I need to sand down, but they're going to go into the bisque this weekend. Um, but um, I kind of got carte blanche to do three others, um, two or three others. I, I'm doing three um, of whatever I wanted to do and she's going to choose from them. So I love carte blanche. <laughs> I hate being told what to do in anything. <laughs> Okay, so this week, um, some of you know that Mickey, Nighttime or Nightcraft Co., um, is also my daughter. And she's on a Mediterranean cruise with my mother. <laughs> they, um, um, I was supposed to go on that cruise, but because of um, the knee surgery I had to have, um, Mickey went in my place. And thank goodness for her. She's a warrior. So my mom ended up. Um, when they were out to sea, <laughs> um, ended between Athens and Sicily. Thank goodness this didn't happen when they, because they just left Turkey, Athens, and now they were headed to Sicily, but it was, they were on the, I don't know how long they were on the boat, but definitely overnight. She ended up with a bunch of uh, abdominal pain, and turns out she had kidney stones, kidney infection, and hold on, I am tethered to the phone because I'm the support group handling all of this. So just hold on just a second. Okay, that wasn't a bad one, good. I've had four hours of sleep in three days because of the time change. Um, so to make a long story short, kidney stones, kidney infection, or kidneys um, failing, okay? So she's on the boat, had an awesome German doctor on the boat that, let me tell you a little bit about my mom. <laughs> My mom is 74, 75. She had me when she was 18, okay? Um, she's an incredibly independent, stubborn, strong woman. And I unfortunately got, well, fortunately, I got a lot of those traits. I only see a doctor when I need surgery, and she's kind of like the same thing. And she does not want to see anybody. My daughter, Mickey, forced her to see the, um, the um, doctors on board ship. <laughs> and they were docking in Sicily the next day and she forced her to go to the hospital in Sicily. Okay, long story short, she had surgery yesterday morning. Sorry. I think I, I, th I thought I had all the fires out. Um, okay, I think, we, I think we're good for a little while. So, all right. Um, so she had surgery to blast the... Um, kidney stone and uh, to put in a stent so that they can get the infection and everything working, right? <laughs> but Sicily happens to be one of those places that um, they don't speak English. Um, a lot of European places, there's always someone. And I know that that is arrogance on um, Americans' part. They figure they can go anywhere and find somebody that speaks English, right? Um, Mickey has been a youth ambassador. She's done study abroad. She's been all, all over the world. She's a very traveled, very seasoned traveler. And she's handling all of this on the ground 
and we're dealing with the travel insurance and thank goodness for travel insurance i could not say any uh, any anything bad about the travel insurance they have been over backwards to help us out to get us a translator that is a medical translator um and so forth so anyway so she had surgery she's doing good she's up and about right now um but just getting everything paperwork oh god the paperwork you know um i got my brother and my sister working on paperwork because i'm an artist i don't do paperwork if i can get away with it <laughs> i'm doing the support stuff handling all funneling all and, and keeping mickey because on an even keel because this has been incredibly stressful her and my mom have a really really close relationship and this has been super super hard on her and um, i'm just trying to keep you know her levels up you know so she doesn't lose it you know she's already scheduled a breakdown for when she gets home <laughs> i'll probably have that breakdown with her anyway so that is a very short um version of this huge issue um if you've ever had um a serious medical issue when you've studied or when you've been abroad okay hold on i gotta clean my camera just a second all right, sorry about that, but I didn't realize there was a spot there. <laughs> but anyway, I'm back in the studio, and thank goodness for this studio, because it coming out here, is, I've been able to de-stress all of this. Um, the biggest risk was that she would go septic. And if my mom had her way, she would not have gotten off that ship. She probably would have been, she probably would have died between Sicily and Barcelona. And if she had made it to Barcelona, she would have flown home and probably died on the plane. So Mickey has saved her life and made sure she got medical care because my mom, I don't know many people that are as stubborn as my mom. But mom, if you're watching, you are grounded when you get home. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. My mom is also a world traveler. She travels all the time. She lives part um, um, of the time here in Utah and part um, of the year in Alaska. And she's go, go, go all the time. But not when you get home. That's not going to happen. You got it? <laughs> all right. So let's get on to the build. And, um, but uh, this channel is me. What you see is what you get. I know I, I just share what's going on in my life. I share what it's like being a full-time potter, potter, having your own business, being a teacher and so forth. So this is what you get. It's, it's a little bit more personal than probably some of the other pottery channels out there. And if you don't like that, I completely understand, but it does help me to be able to voice what's going on, the turmoil inside, you know, all it, it does help to do that and not keep them inside. I don't like anything that stays and festers. No, that's too bad. Bad, bad, bad. Anyway, so let's do something that is positive and uplifting and and, and make um, these wedding vases. So I'm going to show you the two that I've already done and um, and explain what, what I'm doing. And then this is the third one that I have. I threw it on Monday and hopefully um, it's still workable. It's been wrapped up. I've checked it. I've wetted it down trying to keep it to where um, I can still do something with it. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So I'm going to actually switch you over here so you can see what's on the table. This table is something else because the students are also, we've got these massive, actually the sun's not going to work on that. I'm going to have to bring them over. Students have been doing a lot of sculpture and usually the tall sculpture stuff goes on top of the shelf, but those are tall and they won't fit on these other ones. And anyway, so they're just sitting on the table, but let me go ahead and grab one and I will show you what I'm doing. Okay. So this is the first one I did and Marina, I don't know if I'm going to have time to send you pictures. So I'm going to send you this video so you can choose what you want and what, when, what you like. Um, these I decided to do wild Alaskan roses. Marina's from Alaska. They are going to be glazed solid white. Um, so I think it'll be very, very classy. So this is one. Let me grab the other. All right. 
So this is my take on a Navajo wedding vase. Now, um, my uncle Trennis um, was a full-blooded Navajo. He was adopted by my grandparents. And man, I loved him. <laughs> he, um, he was just an amazing man. Anyway, um, I've always wanted to make one of these and I hadn't seen one that had incorporated the ring. And so I gave it a try and I think it turned out really good. So Maria, you're gonna have to let me know. Um, and I'm perfectly fine if this is not your cup of tea. It, I'll keep it. <laughs> All right, so let me cover this one up and then we'll get on the next one. So these are all gonna dry really slow. Um, I have until the wedding is April 13th. So I'm just gonna leave them for a couple of weeks under plastic and just let them do their thing and then I'll fire them. I am first going to show you how I made the uh, wild rose. And there's wild roses all over, not just in Alaska, but Alaska is really, really thick with them. Um, I loved the falls where we'd get the rose, collect the rose hips and do things with the rose hips and make rose hip tea and rose hip jam and rose hip syrup and all those fun things. Alaskans are very much um, the type of people who it's subsistence living, you know, so you go and gather. And um, I really miss that. I know you can do it a little bit here in Utah, but it's effort. To where in Alaska, I just walk out the back door or front door, side door, garage door. <laughs> There's, there's food aplenty in the summertime there. Um, so let me lower you down and I will show you really quick how I am doing the roses. So I've got everything under plastic because these, trying to do something where you're, you've got a thrown vessel and you are going to join them. Everything has to be at the perfect stage so there's no cracking, nothing cracks off and so forth. The flowers are the least important other than they have to be soft. You know, they need to be the wettest of everything. They're also gonna dry the fastest. Um, this is a, it comes with, I don't know if I can find them for you because I've had them for a long time, but they're in the baking like fondant aisle or fondant um, place on Amazon. But it comes like this. I'm only using this part of it because um, a wild rose is five petals. So that's what it looks like, but I have had it forever, so chances of me finding a link to it are probably pretty slim. So, but just know that to do this, a wild rose, you just need five petals. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut out a few of these. And I do need to, move off the plastic because everything sticks to the plastic. I'm just gonna do one, all right? Where's my, oh, everything's over here. I've got everything weighed down over here. Um, you know what, let me grab a bat because with this, I'm using B-Mix and there, it's hard to see B-Mix on the, on the video. All right, I gotta sit down. And that's what all that noise is. All right, I wanna make sure you're in the frame. All right. So what I do here, is I come in here and I just make some slits so I can get those petals and shape the wild rose the way I want it to. Plus I think a wild rose really fits Marina's um, personality. <laughs> uh, she, I she's a lot like me. She's an artist in her own right. You know, very bubbly, very, very fun, very artistic. All right, so I'm just flattening these out, thinning these out, not thinning this out. I want that bulk there. Oh, and I am probably a tick under a quarter, and then I smoothed it out for what I rolled out. And then I'm not gonna add any slip and I'm going to join them and pinch. So join and pinch all the way around. Not too worried about the back by pinching this. It really, you know, smoothed out that back. And then I will take my brush 
dip it into water and then just smooth those petals but I do I don't want to smooth them out I want to don't want my fingerprints in there though pinched a little hard I seriously have had no sleep in three days because I've been the go-to person all of this happened um, around everything over there I mean when it's midnight here it's 8 a.m. there and so everything has been happening during the uh, middle of the night for me or middle of the night and morning for me so um all right so then i've got that and then i'm going to use the ferrule of my brush and also my brush and i'm going to just coax that to come in like that and i'm going to do that on all the petals hopefully my hand's not in the way and you can see this And I do have all the lights on in the studio. I might have to get a light, um, a separate one of those camera lights for filming. It is super overcast. We're supposed to get rain or snow again. Had a really beautiful day yesterday, but boy, weather has been temperamental this week. I love temperamental weather. <laughs> I'm one of those that kind of feeds on thunderstorms and snowstorms. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so there I've got that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I finish this, but this I usually wait until I put them on the vase. But I'm going to take a ball of clay, so take some clay and roll it. And it's a fairly good size ball. It's not like a little teeny ball. Uh, wild roses have a pretty big center. Uh, it's usually yellow. They're usually um, pink and white and so I'm just going to score this and then just add this clay is really wet so I'll add that little ball and then squeeze it Then I'm going to take the end of my brush and just randomly do um, impressions with the back of the brush all over. Okay, and there is my rose. I'm going to add it to the others that I've done. And then this leaf, and I will leave the link for this, this is um, Learn Fired Arts, Michael Harbridge. This is his hydrangea leaf, and it's the small one. And I'm just going to grab some clay over here and I will, I'm pressing this into this clay and then I'm going to tear the clay off and bevel it with my fingers because it'll give me a thin edge. They look more realistic that way, but the clay is still thick or thicker, you know, of course, with the, um, in the middle of the leaf. So once I've done that, then I will carefully peel that back. I'll clean up my edges and then it'll be ready for me to add to the base. And it'll go under plastic. So I actually did a bunch of these flowers last night um, until I couldn't think straight and I started making mistakes. And it's like, okay, you need to, so I got a, a little bit of a nap last night but um, crazy enough, um, I got a nap and when I woke up, I was in a panic thinking that it was um, really late and I had missed, there were a couple of text messages that had come through and I didn't check the time. I should have checked the time because I figured I had slept all night and um, missed out on all of this stuff. And so I went and made a pot of coffee really fast. And then my husband comes in, he, he's an early riser, he usually gets up 4.35. So it wasn't any big deal to it being dark and him up because, and I figured it was probably 5, 5.30 in the morning. And he goes, what are you doing? It's like, I'm making coffee, I gotta get back on this. And he goes, you only took a nap, it's only 9.30. And I said, 9.30 when? <laughs> it was 9.30 p.m., I only took like a two hour nap. So, and I'd made a pot of coffee and then I was up and, 
oh well, it's just been interesting. <laughs> My mother is always good for interesting. Right, Mom? <laughs> All right, so let me set you up again so I can show you. I'm going to move this slab aside so I can show you how I'm going to put this together. And I do apologize if this video seems like it's all over the place. It is. I am. So there you go. And sometimes that's just the way it goes. Life is fickle that way. It likes to throw the curveball. Okay, so I've thrown two... Actually, I'm going to have to back you up because this is going to get pretty big. Sorry if you're getting a bunch of writing, a um, bunch of movement on the camera. Um... But that's just the way it is. To, I'll see if I can, can't minimize that in the editing, but we'll see. So this is some um, trimmed it. It's just a cylinder, and it's going to be the base. And the problem about doing a base on um, these bases is this really has to be set up to hold the weight of the donut. So... It is actually a little, it's, it's leather hard. I can move it and I will keep wetting this so that um, it allows me to um, morph it even more. If you've been watching a while, you know that one of my favorite things to do is combining um, hand throwing or hand, hand building and wheel throwing. I love, love to morph pots. All right. Now, I do have a sponge that I'm going to work with. In fact, now I'm, well, no, we're going to do it this way. I have been putting their tops on and then putting the whole thing on the bottom, but we're going to do it this way. Okay, so here's our donut, and I do, ooh, see, it's been a while. So I've got, um, it's starting to open up. So if that happens, even though I put a hole in it, you're going to get to see how I'm going to fix this. So I'm going to take a coil of soft clay, and we are going to patch this thing. And I'm not too worried because we can patch it, and then we're going to cover it with the flowers anyway. So when I do something like this, I don't want to just stack, put a coil right on it. I'm going to actually flatten this coil down so it's more of a band-aid. Where was that? Oh, that's, I'm going to switch you, see if I can't get you in a better lighting situation. Let's try this. this a little close nope too close actually all right so I've got where was it now and this is the original it's not too bad it's just a hairline but I'm still going to treat it as if it was a bad one so we're gonna go ahead score this whole thing okay just and I'm scoring past the line or the crack I'm also going to have to get my glasses on. And this is all because of me throwing this on Monday. And today is Friday. And I haven't been able to get to it. Um, with everything that's going on this week. So, alright. So then I'm going to take this coil. And I'm going to, and I did score it. And I dipped it in my water. And I'm going to... Put it on there. I'm going to take a damp sponge and I'm going to smooth this in. Get my connection really good and then I will take a rib to it. And we will save it. I've done this many times and I've always been able to save them by doing it this way. So then I'm flattening with the metal rib of death. Okay, I'm 
I'm just going to work on this side just because I'm right-handed. And then I'll tip it over, or then I'll put it upside down. So, smoothing that in so that there is no sign of that crack. I will tip it over. I had a feeling that this might happen, even though I wet it down and had it wrapped really good. I need to get um, some damp boxes in here. But even a damp box, I don't know if it would have kept this from happening because of the... Oh, and if you want to see how I throw donuts, I will link a video. I have, I love throwing donuts. Um, if you've watched um, my Tree of Life urn that I did last year and also the last, I think I did that last December, and also the totem... The garden totem that I did, and that was last summer, June, July, I threw donuts. I love to throw donuts for some reason. I mean, they're challenging to do, um, and I love a challenge. I don't know why, but I do. Probably because of my mother. My mother's a challenge. <laughs> um, so, now this is where that crack was. I am, do I not have, okay, let me grab a hole punch. So I'm going to go ahead and give me a hole. Now this hole at the bottom, I could widen it out if I wanted to, but there's really no need to. Um, and I like the fact that I'm going to have stability here and here for this vase. So let's go ahead and I'm going to back you up because we're going to start getting tall now. I'm going to bring this, actually what I'm going to do is, I don't have enough table space because we've got so much stuff on the table. So let me take this and put it here behind you. And we'll bring this back up. All right. And now we are going to fit these together. And I'm going to squeeze slowly because this is drier than this, actually. I actually want to make sure that that's really in the middle so one side's not higher than the other. So, okay, that looks good. I want to keep it straight. And I'm going to pinch this around. Now I'm going to draw all the way around it. Put that back on my sponge. And then squirt the crap out of it. Because <laughs> I want a really, really good connection here. So I'm really digging in. And for, I got my slippy water here. I'm literally just dunking that in the slippy water. And then I'm gonna come back. Now at this point, you could open that hole if you want. And I'm going to, since I know kind of where, I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge, but I will open it up much. Because this thing is gonna be able to hold a lot of water, actually. And then I tend to, I won't be able to smooth and connect this, but I tend to pinch this up so that it's going to meet the walls in there better. Okay. And then I'm gonna score it. This is wetter, so I don't have to go so crazy with the scoring. And just saw another smoothing. Always smoothing, right? Catch that when I see it. 
I do have this to say about the Sicilian doctors and the nurses over there. Even with the language barrier, they have been amazing. Um, our biggest problem is the language barrier. Um, but they even brought in a bed to my mom's hospital room for my daughter and she's staying in the hospital eventually my mom will be in the hospital until monday they told us today so um she wasn't very far away from going septic and so mainly because my mother does not like to complain she does not like to put anybody out and she has an amazing way of blocking pain, uh, uh, which unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, it's one of those things where it's a, it's a strength and a flaw at the same time. Because I basically, when I see a doctor, I'm needing surgery. I don't really see doctors for any other reason. <laughs> um, and I put it off until um, there's no question. And my mom tends to do the same thing. I wonder where I learned it from, mom. <laughs> she gets upset with me for doing that. All right. So when you've got it like this, let's see if we can get the whole ring in there. You need to really make sure that you are level. You can bring a level in here and actually put a level against it. But this is some, one of the biggest problems about doing this, is you've got this small little ba base, and yet you've put this large thing on top of it. And sometimes I've had them do this in the kiln, where well, they'll slump side to side a little bit. So, um, so I wanna make sure that we're level, we're straight up and down, and that looks pretty good. It looks kind of cockeyed in the, probably because the camera's not straight. <laughs> straighten you up but yeah that looks pretty good so all right and then I'm going to address this joint I'm gonna take some more of that coil I shouldn't have gathered that coil up and I'm going to do a really really thin coil here I've done it too, where if everything is fairly wet, um, I will just smooth all, I'll smooth this into that. But this one's actually my largest um, ring, my largest donut. And I'm going to err on the side of caution. So I'm just gonna bring in that coil. I dipped it in the water and I'm just gonna push it in this joint and I have found that you start smoothing this coil and this coil gets longer so sometimes I will before I add the other piece I will smooth it in a little bit because it'll get some legs <laughs> going around by me doing this anyway all right so let me get that other little bit here. Sorry, let me start over here so you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes I will walk that coil like that. Okay, I'm going to take my sponge, which is damp, not wet, and smooth it first. I think I need to bring in the tool. I'll do that, but I'm also going to bring in a decorative stamp here. I've got too much on that side. So we just make sure we got a really smooth connection. I said this before, but I love it when people see what I've made and they don't know how it was made. Because it's obvious that 
these were thrown on the wheel, but it's not going to look, I mean, there's just no way you could throw the whole thing all together on the wheel. All right, get down here, make sure that that's good and sealed over there. Okay, then since I'm doing um, the roses, this is a MKM tool, I'll link it to, it's one of my favorites, just a little vine, and it, um, for this type of design that I'm doing, hold on, I gotta be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to roll that, this does two things, it gives me that decorative element I want, and it helps to seal this joint too. Puts pressure against that joint so that um, it's not going to crack or come apart. And I will be doing this exact same thing at the top. Now, sometimes with that, you'll get these little tiny goobers. Ooh, glasses. <laughs> just got my reflection it's like ah bifocals oh anyway um i will wait till that's dry and then i'll just knock them off okay so now um i'm gonna put you on pause because even though it's cool out here with everything that's going on and no sleep and the pot of coffee i finally had this morning i'm sweating so i'm gonna go change my shirt so hold on just a second from the um travel insurance company um, has been stellar. Um, it's been a long time since I've experienced really good customer service. I don't even know if you want to call it customer service because they just have gone above and beyond um, and have just been so helpful throughout this um, ordeal. So um, very, very much appreciated um, to Princess and to the travel insurance company. And I am so glad that my mother got travel insurance. <laughs> If you are going abroad, get travel insurance. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, we had no idea this was going to happen. I mean, kidney stones, do you even have any, any symptoms until they're there? <laughs> um, and it's just, anyway. So if you like to cruise and you like to travel, apparently the Sun Princess is quite the ship. All right, let's go ahead and put the top on of this. So this one, I'm going to have to wire it off again. Where's my wire go? I had to dip this one into water because it had dried out too much. And this is the top. And I'm doing um, kind of a style. I've done this style before. I think, I don't think I've shown it. I haven't shown it, but <laughs> sorry, it's a bad hair day. <laughs> um, and it's just a cylinder where I took a wire and I came here and cut it like this and then I thinned out the lip and so forth. It's based on a, a turkey wine vessel, Turkish wine vessel, which I really like the look of them. So I need to make sure that I'm centered again and then I am going to, I need to cut that out. So I'll just take my knife and I actually don't want this to be too thick here where it's going to join. Again, just like anything else, you want consistency in your walls, especially if you're doing things like this. So I'm just going to get that extra clay off. And um, because this had gotten too dry, I dunked it in water. And then I put plastic over it and it um, has softened up considerably in just about a half an hour. All right, actually let's take a little bit more off on this side. All right, so then, okay, you can still see it. Let's, it's actually kind of nice. I'm using you guys, the camera as a mirror. It's actually kind of nice. 
So I'm going to line it up with my base and then I need to line it up sideways so that it's straight up and down on the donut. And then I'm going to carefully, slowly coax, seduce it down where I need it. And then I'll do the same thing. I think we're tipping a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to, where my needle tool go? I am going to draw that line, just like I did the bottom, it's exactly the same thing. And then, I've got my sponge over here. I'm gonna lay that on my sponge so it does not morph the shape, because I don't have a round top and I no longer have a round bottom. And then the line that I drew, I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to come in roughly three eighths um, and cut this out. Okay, so I've got my top cut out and then I'm going to kind of trim this and you don't want, I want a thinner lip where it's going to join. You don't want those trimmings to fall in because you might not get them out and then you'll have a vase that um, rattles, <laughs> which could be fun. But so I'm just thinning out. I'll show you after I get it done. I'm just thinning out that very edge. So and I'm really, really glad that this is still soft enough and I'm not fighting it and it's not too soft. It's actually kind of perfect. Um, so, so this, let me see if I can get the light. See how I trimmed that? So I kind of have a razor edge on the top. And then we are going to score that. Actually, no, sorry, got ahead of myself. We're going to pinch this up just like we did the other one. Because this one I can smooth in, maybe, because that's so tall, I might not be able to. But I'm going to pinch it so that I've got a better attachment. I'm going to go ahead and just soften this up a little bit. Because it is, it did split on me there, so it is a little bit drier. So we'll soften that up. And then I'm just going to, but the smoother I can make, well, you're still going to have to smooth it, and I'll do it with a knife, a wooden knife. But if I can felicitate that being easier, because it's not easy doing it with the knife, because you're going to be, I'm going to be six or seven, eight inches down. So score that. Bring this back here, and I um, will score score this, but I will be pretty aggressive in how I score this one. And by adding my scoring tool to the water and having water on the scoring tool helps kind of soften and make my own slip there. I will still add slip here, but it helps but instead of dunking it since this one was wetter than the other actually I'm gonna do that first faster this is my throwing bucket it needs to be it's soup it is just serious it's it's too thick to throw with <laughs> it's soup so I can just grab some on my sponge and do that so then I'm gonna set this whoops set it straight on here Check it from all angles. Hold the donut while you're pushing this on. Because sometimes if this is not, if the base, if the base is not set up enough, if it's not leather hard enough, you will collapse its base or crack it if you're doing this. And those of you who don't know about this Turkish, actually there's quite a few cultures that have this same design 
but it's fascinating. Um, go down the rabbit hole of research on why these exist. There's actually, this type of vessel is a ceremonial vessel and they would put the vessel in their arm and when they would pour out of it, they'd have to bow. And so there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes with this that I just, I just love that kind of history. And I just kind of get off on it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna smooth this in. Do the same thing like I did below. And then I will add a coil. Now I'll do this off camera because I don't want the video to get really, really long, but I'll show you what, if I have the tool, I don't have it over here, it's over on my wheel. So the wooden knife that usually comes with um, your starter kit for throwing, that's what I'm gonna use. And I'm just gonna go in here and I might have to do this at my wheel so because it's so tall. Um, I'll just go in here and I will smooth those edges against here. So I'll do that off camera because I take my time to do that to make sure I've got that looking nice. Even though, I mean, seriously, it's so far down there, not a lot of people are going to see it. But I also don't want somebody to look in there and see a line, an unfinished line. I just don't. So... That's what I'll do. All right, I actually, I've got really good clay there. I don't know if I'm gonna do a coil here because I got a really, really good connection to where below I couldn't squeeze that up and really connect that and then I will be smoothing it on the other side. So this one I'm just going to wet, bring in, God, I hate having to wear these things. <laughs> Bring in my um, little tool and smooth that line. I actually, on the wedding base, which was complicated, and I'd never made one before, I had in my mind uh, what it might look like, but then I had to figure out, hold on a second. That call I don't need to take. So I usually hate having the phone with me in the studio. I hate being interrupted. <laughs> in fact, my husband is, because he works from home now too, thanks to COVID, and um, he will bring me my phone because he doesn't want to come out here and talk to me. <laughs> he doesn't want to go through effort. He just wants to call me, you know, and say, and it usually is like, can you take care of the dogs? I'm on a conference call, or can you do this? Or I need, you know, and it's like, I'm working too, buddy. <laughs> anyway, so it's been an adjustment and I really thought I'd hate it, but um, I actually really like it. I've never, we've been married um, 37 years and I don't think we've ever spent this much time together. <laughs> and, we don't have the kids to buff it or, you know, um, in between us to kind of, you know, we're both really strong personalities, both Geminis. So you can imagine four people in this relationship. So it can get, um, it's actually good though. One of the reasons I've been asked to be married by another guy and he was a great guy, nothing against him. Great job, great guy. He was a lot older. I was 17, he was 27. Um, had a lot of fun with him, but I could walk all over him. And <laughs> my husband, I can't do that. <laughs> but then he doesn't walk all over me either. So we're kind of a good fit. So we complement each other that way. We're the yin and yang of each other. And, um, I, um, um, kind of force him out of his shell and make him do things, try things that he's not comfortable with. And he's always holding me back off. It's, it's kind of a running joke that he's, I'm always the one ready to leap off the edge and he's holding on to me to keep me grounded. So he's, he's the one that's gr grounding the relationship and I'm the one that's, well, come on, let's be serious. I had the fun, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the same thing with this and I'm going to pick this side to start and stop because I might, I don't know if I will, 
but I might add a handle. We'll see. Probably. I probably will. So, let's... Yeah, this is just a great roller, you guys. I mean, it just adds a really classy design. All right. So at this point, actually at this point I need to add the handle. Dang it, I wasn't thinking about that. All right, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to pull a handle and um, let this set up some. And then I will bring you back when I am going to add those pieces. But one thing I'm going to do at this point. So I've got these joints that are super soft because I've been working with them. So I'm going to bring my sponge back and I'm going to set the bulk and the weight of this is right here on the circle. So I will set it up on a sponge like this and let it stiffen up a little bit while I, actually I can leave this here, I'll just leave that over there. And then I will throw a handle and be right back. I'm back. I have got two handles that I gave um, time to set up a little bit. They're still pretty wet. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and set this up. And I decided that, well, I did decide that they needed two handles, but now I'm thinking it needs just the one. <laughs> I don't know. We'll put the one on and see where I go with that. Let's see, where can I put this that's in the frame? Whoops. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to take my roller and continue my decoration. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, even if I don't use it. Yeah, they're still pretty floppy, but at least they're not as wet as they were. I always put my handles on with a dowel. I like the way they look. I like that my um, connection is really good. And if you want to see how I um, pull a handle, I have some videos there. I didn't show it here because there's a lot going on. <laughs> so I do flatten this out. So I get myself a little bit of a paddle. And I'm not sure where I'm going to put this. I know I need to put it here, so I'm going to need to look at it um, while I set it. Well, I think it's going to go right there. So I'm going to go ahead and really flatten this one out because I actually want to curl this one. We are talking wedding base after all. So... I basically flattened it out. You can see the edge on it. And then I'm just going to wiggle, wiggle this and coax it to do a fun little curl. Let me just I'm trying to show you and trying to see at the same time. That is a talent I don't really have. <laughs> All right. So now let's come back to this. Oh, golly, you can't even see it. Hold on. There we go. Let's concentrate on that. Yeah, this is fairly tall. So with most pictures, I like the handle to be close to the edge. So I'm thinking just like that. I might make it a little smaller. Let's see if I wonder if I want it to connect here or if I want it to connect there. I think I'm going to make it a little bit really nice. I'm going to take off about three quarters of an inch and then flatten that out. If you've never done a donut before or you've never done anything on this scale, I challenge you to do it. They're quite fun. And they definitely are a statement piece. 
All right, let's see if I like this one. That's also one of the reasons why this is pretty floppy. I didn't want it to set up too much. Let's see, what if I did? I kind of want... This is a wedding, and seriously, the wedding's for the girl, right? So I'm perfectly fine if it has more of a feminine... Well, of course it does. It's going to have flowers on it, too. Because it's all about the bride. It's all about, about my niece, Marina. This is her day. <laughs> Honeymoon is his day. <laughs> or his night, right? Okay. I'm going to make it just a... I'm taking off about three-eighths of an inch now. And then flattening that out. Ah, there we go. I like that one. All right, so now, score. I'm gonna go ahead and score the bottom of this too. And I'm gonna score the top of this first and attach it. And this is drier than the handle. But this will be under plastic, too, for quite a while. I don't take any chances when I put this much work into a piece. Actually, I need it to face me so I can get this on straight. Okay. Where did... Oh, right there. Then I'm going to take the dowel and I'm just going to rock it back and forth. And make sure I've got a connection there that's really good and what this does gives me a little bit of a flip there which I really like and that will set this um it will work really well with what I'm doing here is to have that little flip and I will also come in and exaggerate that a little bit right now I'm just getting the tool marks off from the dowel if there are any, just moving that down. And then we're going to attach this. And I think I'm going to attach it just right under there. And make sure it's straight. And then with this one, I am going to just, I actually want it to come up just a bit. I kind of want it to look like a cute little ponytail. I'm just going to wiggle it on. And then I'm just going to leave it there and hope for the best. <laughs> I don't really worry about these type of handles on these type of pieces. Um, Definitely not going to be picking it up by the handle until after it's glazed. So most likely it's going to get picked up over here anyway on the ring. So then I'll come in. And when I come in and do this, I kind of push so I can get that. I can exaggerate that little curl. And where did my glasses go? Oh, they're right in front of me. So I'm just going to. Make sure my connections are good. I'm going to come in with my brush and really smooth those down. And now the fun stuff begins. Now we get to um, decorate it. All right. Just gonna smooth this on each side, smooth in the middle there. Okay, and then come in here and I will grab any slip that has oozed out from here. 
Now, if my handle is too floppy, get my, I always keep, I always buy these in, in big batches as we go through them. So I want to make sure that that is on there straight. And if I need to, I will like put a sponge, but I don't think I need to. I think I'll just keep an eye on it as we are doing the, um, the uh, flowers. That's going to be pretty. All right, Marina, if you don't want this one, one of these is your wedding present. So, and um, I always make a deal with um, my brides, um, my family brides, not um, customers, but family brides. I make it all, they get to choose what they want um, to keep. And then um, the mother-in-law and the um, mother of the bride get to choose one. And then I take the rest back and uh, sell them. So, all right, just wanna make sure. Okay, let's go ahead and move on because I can fiddle like nobody's business. <laughs> all right, let me clean up the spot and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and get you set up to where you can see what I'm doing better. All right, I made a bunch of flowers ahead of time. So this is going to be, um, I'm probably going to speed you up after, I'll just talk about placement. Um, I kind of want to do, this is the one that I showed you how to make. I kind of want to do the kind of placement I did um, with the wedding base. And I just really like how that turned out. So I will start that and explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I'm just going the back of these and then I'm just gonna set this one up here. And I'm gonna give each of them some room. I'm just scoring where the flower is going to connect. Um, I'll have to be super careful handling these until after they've been glaze fired because these petals will be super fragile. So, Because they're sticking up. So if you've watched any of my um, my fairy house videos, I do that too. So this one I'm going to bring down. I'm keeping room, to, like I said, to add the leaves because they'll be the last thing I add. And I am just, I will, if I see something on the back of the flower, I made these last night and I've had them wrapped up. So now I can, since I don't have the center of the flower, I can really push that flower on and then I will throw in the center. And when I put the center in, twist it until it grabs, and I'll press it again a little bit and then I either do it now or I come back after I've had them all on and add the little, I wonder what these are called. They're not stamens, they're, anyway, the stuff that makes everybody have hay fever. Not me, I'm not one that suffers luckily. So I'll probably, I need to get these flowers on. This is drying out. I need to get it under plastic. Now the flowers are unwrapped. They're drying out. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed you up. And we'll get these flowers on here.
Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, there's a lot of symbolism in some of the things that I made. Uh, the wedding vase especially, where you've got the two spouts coming as one. And then I also purposely chose the hydrangea, the small hydrangea leaf, because it looks like a heart. And I think I'm going to leave this one for now. I'm going to put it under plastic and come back and look at it to see if there's anything else that needs to be added. I might add in some leaves there, but it will get rid of that uh, decorative uh, vine that I put in here. So for now, I'm going to call it. I will put pictures up later tonight um, after I revisit this um, to show you in case I made some changes. And then one other thing I thought of too, I think I'm going to leave this, I mean it's it's got a lot going on. Plus, I wanted all of them to look different. And if she wants, I left a place on each one of these vases that if she wants me to, I can put their names and the date on it. So this is definitely a great place for that. On the one with the flowers on the side, I could put their names on the other side. And then same thing with the wedding vase, I could put their names on the side if she wants. Anyway, so that's going to be it for me today. I'm starting to make mistakes. I need a nap. So I think I've gotten four hours in the last three days. So with um, being on night duty, with um, helping out with my mom over there and my daughter. Um, so impressed with my kid. Boy, am I impressed with her. So, um, all right, I'm going to let you go. Next week, barring any problems, um, I don't foresee any. Everything's kind of under control at the moment. Uh, we're going to do those baskets, which I've got some great tips. Baskets are notoriously hard because they dry out so fast while you're working. And then as you try to form the back basket, the strips um, crack and break. And so they're really a pain, but they're super cool. <laughs> so we'll talk about that next week. For now, go get money and have a great weekend.